All right, so I put out a quiz earlier this week. I put out two quizzes for IT fundamentals and A plus software. Give you guys like a whole week to go through the stuff. Time quizzes because I want to get you guys accustomed to taking a timed exam because when you guys go sit down to take the certification exam, you're going to be taking a time test and you will probably have about approximately one minute or so to answer each question. It doesn't matter which comp to your test you're taking, whether you're taking IT fundamentals, A plus, net plus, security plus and some of the higher level certs. These are how all of the CompTIA tests are structured for the most part. Most of them, you will have multiple choice questions. Some of them you might have quote unquote hands on, which isn't really hands on, but it's really you just kind of manipulating some stuff, dragging and dropping stuff to simulate what you would do to do to a certain device. But when it comes to the CompTIA IT fundamentals exam, I believe it's just strictly, uh, I want to say 75 questions. You get about 60 minutes and they're all multiple choice questions. So what I've been doing, I've been creating these little weekly quizzes and I've been telling you guys what to go through and study, what videos to go back and study so that one, you can learn the information if you haven't learned it, especially if you're brand new. But even if you're somebody that's on a higher level of learning where you're like trying to learn A plus, net plus, security plus, something like that, this information can still help you out because a lot of this information from IT fundamentals can be directly applied to other so-called higher level certifications. Anyways, this week's quiz, we were talking about the basics. Uh, I told you guys to go study these IT fundamental videos, basics of computing and processing and the value of data. That was the focus of this week. But anyways, let's go ahead and get into this quiz. So the first question is, so remember this was IT fundamentals, videos 1.3 and 1.4, the basics of computing and processing and the value of data. So the first question was, which of the following activities is not considered an input? Would it be typing, scanning, printing, or recording? So which of these activities is not considered an input? And the correct answer for this would be, this would be printing. Printing is an output. You send some information to the printer, it prints off a piece of paper with your image or words on it. That is considered an output. Everything else, typing, scanning, recording, you're taking information and putting it into the system. All right. So that's how that works. Next question. When a file is changed, saving the file, this is an example of which activity? Would this be an output, processing, input, or would this be storage? So when the file is changed, saving the file is an example of what? And the correct answer would be, this would be an output. So this could be a little confusing because some people might think, well, that's storage. Well, you got to get used to CompTIA. They'll throw these little tricky words in there that make it look like the answer is going to be one thing, but you have to really kind of pay attention to what they're actually saying. So the key word here is saving. That means you are in the process of saving this thing and moving it to a location. So that's why they consider this an output. Once it actually finishes saving and is resting in the location, then that will be considered storage. All right. So that's how CompTIA defines this, even though most people would think to include myself, I would think that this would just be an act of storage, but they define this as an act of output because the file is actually in the process of being saved from one spot to another. Even more trickier with this question, technically this could also be classified as possibly processing. The act of actually saving the file could be processing. But in this example, how they got this answer outlined, they're talking about that little quote unquote medium ground between saving saving and where the file is resting. That will be considered the output. That is what they're talking about. All right, next question. A graphics processing unit or a GPU, this helps to process information you see on screen. What other activity does it do? So what else does a GPU do? Does it uh, provide output, input, storage, or no other activity? So a graphics processing unit helps to process information you see on the screen. What else does it do? It provides output. So the graphics processing unit, the GPU, when it's going through manipulating the ones and zeros so that you can see what's actually being displayed on the screen. That is actually an act of processing, hence the name processing unit. When you actually see the manipulated ones and zeros that produce your image, that is the output of what you're seeing. So that's what that is. All right, so let's go ahead and get through this quiz. So A plus software. So I told you guys to study. You go to my playlist tab and you'll see I got all the courses posted up in there. So you go to the A plus course and I told you guys to study videos 1.1 through 1.3. And those videos, they cover operating systems, Microsoft Windows versions and operating systems installations. That was what the focus of this quiz was about. All right, so let's go ahead and get to these questions. My right, first question is, it says examples of workstation, operating systems include which of the following? Select all that apply. Would this be iOS, Microsoft Windows, Chrome OS, 
or Apple Macintosh operating system or Mac. So which of the examples are examples of workstation operating systems? And the correct answer would be, oh, I forgot to list one, Linux. Which one of these will be workstation operating systems? And the correct answer is these will be Windows, Mac, and Linux. These are workstations. That's the key word here, workstations, operating systems. iOS is not a workstation. That is a mobile device and Chrome OS. That is just a browser. But these are workstation operating operating systems, all right? The term branch cache refers to a wide area network or a WAN bandwidth optimization technology implemented in some versions of Microsoft Windows. Branch cache accelerates the process of serving network content by saving previously requested WAN resources on local servers or client computers, which allows the subsequent request to be served locally rather than from a remote server. Is this true or this false? Correct answer is this is true. So basically branch cache. As a matter of fact, my actual website technology G kind of works like this to a certain extent. So when you guys go to my website, technologyg.com. You're going to be looking at, obviously, my website, but you're not looking at it in quote unquote real time. It's pulling information from another server and giving you the most updated copy of it. And I got it set up like that for certain, for specific reasons to minimize what they call DDoS attacks, distributed denial of service attacks, where people try to ping my website to death and knock it offline. So basically, my website sits on another server somewhere. How this directly relates to branch cache, it takes like a, a picture or a copy of it and then puts it out there for the public to see. And so you're not actually interacting with the actual server you're interacting with a copy of what's on my server so that's kind of how this works a little bit all right which of the installation types provides a simpler and less costly alternative to a manual operating system installation in an environment consisting of multiple hosts requiring the same configuration settings it's being in place upgrade remote network installation and image deployment or an unattended installation so which of the installation types provides a simpler and less costly alternative to manual operating system installations in an environment consisting of multiple hosts requiring the same configuration settings and this would be an image deployment so you got a hundred computers in your office and they all need the same operating system installed in the same settings and all that stuff. It's simply easier just to create a master copy or a master image on one device, copy that image and then deploy it to the rest of the machines. Whether you got to physically go around and do this, which nobody recommends, or you put it on the server and then pull the operating system over the network. That's what they're talking about. And back in the day, when I was overseas in the military, we used to have to go to every computer and physically do this. It was, ugh, I hated that, but whatever.